Well, it's that time again. What time is that? It's time to get naked. Like all the way naked? Well, keep your clothes on, but it's time for the Naked Party Time Podcast, where we get real and raw about life, leadership, and love. While having lots of fun along the way. So what do you say? Are you ready to get naked? Let's do it. The church doesn't always represent Christ. Sometimes we get it wrong. Very wrong. So how do we have conversations with those who have been hurt by the church, And how do we pray for them as well? That's what we're going to focus on today in episode 55 of the Naked Party Time podcast called Help, I've Been Hurt by the Church. Welcome back or welcome for the very first time. If you're joining us on YouTube, hello to you there. Our goal here is to get real and raw about life, leadership, and love, hence the name, the Naked Party Time podcast. We should get uh, like skin colored bodysuits we wear one time so it looks like we're naked that would really freak people out (laughs) (laughs) they'll be thankful they're listening and not watching (laughs) Uh, my name is jeff manis as always i am joined by my wife my co-host my life companion my ministry mate and my queen sabrina how you doing sabrina i'm doing pretty good today we didn't get a podcast in last month we had some family in town, some other obligations to attend to. You went up to Cheyenne to visit our daughter Mariah and her family for a very specific reason. Can we share why you were up there? Yes, I went to help her pack up her house and move into temporary housing in Cheyenne until they're able to move here. They're moving here. I'm so excited. Lord willing, they'll be down here sometime in early summer. Yes. Uh, we're praying that her husband gets a job, so he's looking for a job down here. Yeah, that's the last piece of the puzzle. They already yep. have a house they're going to rent down here. Yeah, which is like less than five minutes from our house. Less yes. than three minutes from our house. <laughs> yes, which is awesome. It is awesome. So Caleb just needs a job, and then everything will be together. Yep. So when you had asked to go up there, help Mariah move... <laughs> You and Jada did not agree. Well, you you said you needed to be gone for 14 days. Well, let, no. can, let's back it up. Okay, hold on. Let's back it no, up. No, you said you need to be gone for 14 days, right? You, did you say that? I didn't Just, say 14 days. Well, that was the length of time between yeah, the two. Yeah, but if I can <laughs> say something. <laughs> more... Let, let's just start. Can you answer that question? Your flight was 14 days apart, up there and back. Yes. Okay. Now you add what you want to add <laughs> Mariah was here. Uh-huh. From, She's visiting here. Yes. Yep. She came for Jonah's baby shower, even uh-huh. though she couldn't quite make it. Yep. April 7th through the 17th. Yep. They closed on their house April 27th. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to go home with her, uh-huh. help her pack up her house, move into the basement, and get situated. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I needed two weeks for that. Yep. And so you had like... Five days after you were done to just hang out with Dakota. No. the I got there Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we packed up our house. Okay. On Sunday, we moved her. <laughs> and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we had to clean the other house. We had to call a plumber. We had to do a bunch of stuff for the other house. Then they closed on their house Friday. We reorganized the basement, got it all set up. So then I was there Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Just to hang out with Dakota. And Mariah. Plus, I saw some friends Mm -hmm. and I went to church and because I don't know when I'm coming back to Cheyenne. I know. So you were you were very you were very helpful for Mariah and Caleb. Yes, I was. And I think you really wanted to spend time with Dakota. You know what? That is besides the point. I was going there to help them. Well, we wanted you back here because you're loved and missed here. Whatever. One night, Jada sent me a picture of Jada, Jonah, and Nina sitting in the living room, starving. And Jada said... We missed you here. "Mm -hmm." Jada said, (laughs) Mom, we need you to come back. And I was like, why? She's like, because it's 5.45 and Dad hasn't started dinner yet. Like, you guys only want me here to make you dinner. That's all you need me You're here still, for. That's that's missing you. Oh, so you don't starve to death. Did anybody starve while I, I was missed gone? you. I didn't, I didn't have a problem waiting later to eat. I just missed you. Mm. I did. Whatever. <laughs> 
Well, one of our listeners, Brittany, suggested a podcast on how to have conversations with those who have church hurt or specific prayers for them. And when I told you what our topic was for this month, what was the very first thing you said? Like immediately you said, what if I have church hurt or what if we have church hurt? Yeah. What if the pastor has church hurt? I don't know that I'm ready to talk about this subject. And that's the exact same thing I actually said to Brittany when she commented on the social media post. I said, what if the pastor has church hurt? And she said, I think you should talk about that too. Well, maybe we'll save that talk about pastors experiencing church hurt for another time. But we did want to try and help address this subject of how we can help those who have experienced church hurt and maybe offer some suggested prayers we can pray for them. It's why we called this episode, Help, I've Been Hurt by the Church. Now, church hurt comes in many forms and many levels, Mm -hmm. ranging just from judgmental people, which can be very hurtful, all the way to extreme forms of church abuse, whether it's abuse of power resulting in physical, emotional, financial, or even sexual abuse. Sadly, that happens. Mm -hmm. It's tragic. And just recently, within the last 5, 10, 20 years, recent church history, we've seen this come to the forefront with the Catholic Church, recently with the Southern Baptist Church, and many others as well. And the Me Too movement kind of helped bring about some safety Mm. and some commonality for people, I think, to start speaking up about some of that hurt they experienced. Um, Sadly, again, this is a part of our culture, and it's been a part of the church. Anything you want to say there? Yeah, it's just sad that if we have Jesus living in our heart, we should be acting differently, and we don't always. Yep. I mean, we, we all have to fight our flesh every yep. day, and sometimes that flesh wins, and people get hurt, unfortunately. Yep. And there's often unintended hurt. Right. Things done with good intentions that end up hurting someone. It's not that it, the, the extreme forms of yeah. abuse and trauma in the church, the, those are leg, um, intentional. <laughs> um, you don't unintentionally sexually harm somebody. Right. But there, so there is that, there's a wide range. Mm-hmm. Um, even even those, those people who are truly seeking to honor the Lord in our brokenness, we can often unintentionally hurt someone. So there's a a wide range here. Right. And we are not experts on how to navigate these things by any means. We are not professional counselors or psychologists. Uh, For many people, they're going to need the help Mm -hmm. of a professional counselor to guide them through their hurt and to help them find healing in Jesus. But while we are not professionals, I do think we can speak into the question that was asked. How do we have conversations with people who've been hurt by the church or prayers to pray for them? And I have four principles that I think will be helpful for us in this. And as usual, they all start with the same letter. Oh, good. I was worried. That's how I know the podcast is worthy to hit the air. (laughs) We have alliteration, folks. We can move on. So, Sabrina, what's the first principle in having a conversation with someone who's been hurt by the church? Be humble. And we could probably do a whole podcast on that, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you wrote the book on I it. did write a book on uh, humility and how I attained it. Yes, yes. Yeah. So everybody pick that up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Available wherever you buy books. Um, if you're talking to somebody who has expressed that they've been hurt by the church, especially if it's a church that you love or are a part of, yeah. part of being humble in the conversation is not defending your church or defending yourself or defending a leader or a pastor first. It's easy for us to rush to defend. Right. And again, oftentimes that's well-intentioned. We love our church. We love our pastor. We whatever, love our small group leader, whatever it is. And so when someone has the vulnerability to maybe share with us how they've been hurt by a church, a pastor, a person, or whatever, it's easy for us to rush to defend that place that we love. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. But as we see in the book of James in the New Testament, James says that we should all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Yeah. And 
I often reverse that. I'm quick to get angry, slow to listen, and I'm very quick to speak. Yeah. So I think one of the reasons why it took so long for some of the abuse to come to surface in the Catholic Church or the Southern Baptist Church or whatever church out there was there was some defending happening. Mm -hmm. And maybe again, it was, it was with good intentions for those who just couldn't believe that those things could be true. Yeah. Um, people trusted their leaders. Some people had not experienced the same forms of abuse. And so they thought, well, there's no way that could be happening in, in the church. And so they, they sought to defend the church, the pastor, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to be humble, let's not defend first. Let's listen first and maybe even ask some thoughtful questions. Yeah. Anything there? Well, and I think we have to remember that the person that is hurt, it, that's their perspective yep. and how they perceived it. Yep. And so we can't argue with them to some degree because that's how they felt in the yep. moment. And then your feelings are real. Yep. They might not always tell the full truth, right. but you need to let that person feel what they're yep. feeling and sit with them in it, even if you don't agree yep. or you know a different side of it yep. you have to it's it takes a lot of patience yep. and there are there's some things we're going to get to here in a little bit on some i think next steps you might take if somebody that you know of expresses church hurt yeah depending on what form of church hurt it is i think there are some steps we can and should take that helps to does help to defend those people that have been hurt and maybe would have accelerated these things being brought to light in other situations but yeah so part of being humble is just not defending first. Also, I think there are times that we need to apologize. Not always just apologizing like ourselves, like, like, like we hurt them, but apologizing on behalf of the churches that we're a part of that have hurt people. Yeah. Like anyone who is listening right now, who has experienced church hurt, I would say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that... You experience hurt at the hands mm. of a ministry that bears the name of Jesus. Yeah. And like we should always lead with that. Like if somebody expresses hurt, we need to, I'm sorry, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Like that wasn't right. Um, what, how you felt was real, like you said. Yeah. So before we ever get into the, is it true, all that kind of stuff, I'm sorry and offer our care and support for that person. Anyone, if there's anyone out there who has been hurt by myself, I think you would echo the same thing by you, by a church we've been a part of. We would genuinely ask for your forgiveness. Yeah. And say, we are sorry for any hurt that we may have caused or someone in a church we've been a part of may have caused. Um, there was a time at, at Element like on the spot, I had to apologize to someone. Uh, it was after a sermon, preached a sermon. I don't even remember what the sermon was about. But I remember this, while I was still on the platform, one of our volunteers, who was a difficult person to deal with, <laughs> walked right up to the platform. Other people were there, could hear what he was saying. And he didn't say anything positive just said, basically started telling me what I left out of my sermon and should have said mm -hmm. or what I sh said wrong. And I did not respond well. I said back in frustration after, I think it was after our last service of the day. So I was exhausted, which is not an excuse, but I, I did not respond appropriately. Mm -hmm. And other people heard within earshot what I said to him. I didn't say anything vulgar or I wasn't profane, but I just, I was short with him and told him pretty clearly and abruptly, this is the wrong place for you to do that. And kind of explained to him, like, do you understand how much time I put into this sermon? I like started defending myself mm -hmm. and ended up hurting him in the process. He went away pretty um, upset. Well, immediately I was convicted. I told our executive pastor what I did and said, I just want you to know what I did. I'm going to apologize to those who were around. And I'm going to reach out to him and apologize too. So I called the guy immediately and apologized to him. He actually, he, he was 
wasn't holding it against me, forgave me. I apologized to some people that were around there, but it was one of those moments where I knew I'd hurt somebody. Yeah. But I, I didn't want to let, just let it go. I wanted to deal with it in the moment. Mm -hmm. So anyway, anything you want to add there? No. You want to apologize to me for anything? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you want to apologize to me for anything? Yes, for giving you a hard time about the amount of time you spent in Cheyenne. Yeah, maybe maybe you need to tap out forgiveness or something. <laughs> Because I took care of you guys before I left. I didn't just leave you stranded. Yeah, I know. I menu planned. I grocery shopped. I, I prepared you. meals. Just teasing you. I had everything figured out. Just teasing you. I think we should all seek to apologize quickly. Yeah. When we, even if we think we might have offended someone, this is just true in life. Yeah. Apologize for what you've done. I think something that's helpful for us remembering this, and you kind of mentioned it already is perceived hurt is still hurt. Yeah. That when we defend first, we aren't coming from a humble posture of helping that a person, caring for them, honoring them. So if they perceive they've been hurt, it still is hurt to them. Right. So the initial response needs to be one of humility, care, honor, respect before Any, you ever get to anything else. Even if you don't ever understand that person's perceived hurt like even yes. if you don't agree with it or ever understand it it's still how they perceived yep. it and it's still where they're gonna stand and so sometimes you just have to let it go and just walk with them however they need it yep. even though it doesn't seem right yep. to you yeah so it can kind of be a tricky situation but um and if you follow the appropriate steps, which I think we'll talk about yeah, here in a little yeah. bit, the truth will be revealed. Right. Like what I've said many times, even in the last couple of years, is if we know what the truth is, it shouldn't scare us. Right. Now, if you've intentionally harmed someone, especially in a way that is illegal or, you know, that sexual abuse physical abuse, right. that kind of thing, like, I, that should scare us. Right. Scare and, us into not doing it. And steps do need to be taken yes. in that case. It, I mean, it really is a case-by-case case situation. And how yeah. well do you yes. know the person that was hurt? Yeah. How much digging have you done? Have you heard the other side? Yeah. Like, you know, all the things that you yeah. do. And we'll, 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 I don't want to get ahead of it. We're going to get into some of that. Steps we can take, I think, to provide some help. But yeah. um, so we just want to we just want to start with humility. I think if we start there, like that changes a lot of things. Right. If we start with a posture of humility that we don't defend, that we are quick to apologize, that we seek to understand, that we offer care and support, that we are patient with them and hear them out and try to understand where they're coming from and how they perceive, like all those things, come from a posture of humility. Mm -hmm. The second thing, though, second principle is, is what? Be honest. So we want to start with humility, but we also want to be honest. And so you've, you've already highlighted this a little bit. Depending on the depth of a relationship that you have with someone, you can start going deeper in the conversation. Yeah. So one thing I always want to remind people of when they've been hurt by the church, and again, depending on the relationship, how much I know about what happened, this might be an appropriate thing to remind somebody of in a humble way, right. but an honest way is the fact that the church doesn't always represent Christ. Mm. Like meaning the way the church treats you is not from Jesus. Right. It's not how, you know, Jesus treats you or desires you to be treated. That if the church hurt you, Jesus didn't. And it's, it's hard to separ separate those things. Right. A lot of people let the way Jesus followers have treated them keep them from following Jesus. And so as lovingly and as honestly as I can, I would want to remind someone to not let the hurt from the church keep them from seeking healing in Jesus. Right. Right? So don't give up on Jesus or his church because of what one church or one person or one group did in his name. That makes sense? Yeah. It is hard to separate the two because yeah. if we claim to have Jesus living in our heart 
it should change us enough, but we are all still broken with the sin nature that we have to fight. Yep. And we all have off days, make dumb decisions, say something dumb, be sarcastic. Like we all have those moments Mm -hmm. where we are not wise. Yep. I mean, and we I, aren't reflecting Jesus correct. well. Right, yeah. I think it's good to also be honest about that. Like the, the way that person acted towards you, they weren't reflecting Jesus. Yeah. That's an honest thing to say. That's part of that humility and apologizing for them. But then also saying, but don't let that person keep you from Jesus. That's what the devil wants. Right. Well, and I think here is safe to say that we have to remember that we do have an enemy that is yep. very divisive mm-hmm. and he loves to stir trouble up in the church and cause division. And so I think so often we can look at a certain person as our flesh and blood enemy, but ultimately that they're not our enemy, right. but the enemy might be using them. Yep to get to us because they have a weak spot or they've opened the door to the enemy and they can't see how the enemy is using them to get to somebody else. And so like, I just, I mean, I say a true statement every week that just reminds me of who the enemy is and what he does so that I, if I am hurt by somebody in the church, I constantly have to say they are not my enemy. The enemy is using them to get to me so that I don't become bitter yep. towards them. And that it's it's hard to even yep. keep that straight in your head. Yep. And to remember about ourselves, the enemy can use me <coughs> against somebody. Right. And so what do I need to, yeah. Jesus, what, what yeah. is between us that I need to fix? Yep. Because I don't want to yep. open the door for the enemy to use me. Yep. I don't want to be a weak link yep. in his divisive plan. Yep. And so staying on top of all the things you know to do. Yeah. I mean, it's, con- it's consistent daily work. Yep. So part of being honest is also challenging the person that you're talking with who's been hurt to be honest as well. Meaning, have they talked to the person or the party that hurt them? Yeah. Like, does the, does the person who offended them know that they offended them? Or if it's an extreme case of hurt, like that abuse of power, physically, emotionally, sexually, have they talked to, to some f- governing body or legal authority over that person? So if it's a small group or small group leader that's hurt you, have you talked to a pastor at the church who c- helps oversee that? Yeah. If it's a pastor, have you talked to the board? The elders, the denomination, if there's a denomination involved, is there legal action that needs to take place with authorities? Like the person who's been hurt, you can't deal with that hurt unless you've also been honest with those who have hurt you. Right. And maybe with those who have authority over them to deal with it. Well, it's accountability because we are all accountable to someone. Yep. And we don't want that to happen again. Right. Especially, again, we don't want any hurt to happen, perceived or real. Right, right. But unintentional or intentional. But especially when there is intentional hurt happening in the church, that needs to be dealt with. Right. Sometimes legally. Mm -hmm. And so we want the person who's been hurt to be honest with somebody that can do something about it. So not only should we be honest, but we need to encourage them to be as well. Which leads into the next principle. What is that, Sabrina? Be helpful. So we want to start with humility. We want to be honest with them about some things, but also encourage them to be honest fully as well. But we also, we do want to be helpful in the process. So we could offer to go along with them, to talk to the person who offended them. Like when we ask them, hey, have you told so-and-so that they've hurt you? If the answer is no, then we might offer... Well, how can I help you have that conversation? Right, because it's scary. It is very scary Mm -hmm. to let someone know they've hurt you. When appropriate, like not in a defensive way and not trying to hide what hurt has been done, but we may need to help someone in seeing the picture more fully. I think sometimes when you start understanding the full picture, you start to realize that maybe there's the perception was wrong. The hurt was real. Perception was wrong. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So a few specific things come to mind, okay? And this is where I think right now, I do think we are in a hypersensitive 
culture these days. And we are very, very quick to claim, and I want to be very, very careful here. We are very quick to claim abuse simply when my feelings have been hurt. And I'm not discounting the real abuse that happens. Right. But we, I mean, I don't think any of us would disagree. We are in a hypersensitive. Somebody says one thing wrong online and they're canceled forever. Mm -hmm. Like just hypersensitive. No one can make a mistake anymore. But (laughs) there are some things I think that are helpful for folks to understand. And here's a few. Accountability is not the same as attack. Mm. Sometimes the church is simply, honestly, practically trying to hold someone accountable to the truth of Scripture, and it is perceived as hurt. Right. And it might, it might hurt. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the truth hurts. Right. Well, and sometimes in our hurt, it reveals what we might need to work right. on in a deeper sense. Yep. But accountability, like we need to understand this, is not the same as attack. Now, we can hold somebody accountable in the wrong way, with the wrong tone. But I'll just put it in just like a, a practical what-if example. Like you and I are in a small group. If in that small group, we, you and I, we were not whatever. Let's say we were not talking appropriately. We were talking down to somebody. Or we weren't following through on our word. Hey, we'll bring, um, we'll bring the meal this week. We don't do a meal dodge, but we'll bring the meal. And then we just don't, oh, sorry, we forgot. And we do that over and over and over again. If our small group then were to confront us in a loving way and said, hey, the, it, you guys aren't being kind in the way you're speaking. Or you, you say you're going to do this, but you don't follow through. Mm-hmm. That's holding us accountable. That is not attack. It might hurt that we're being held accountable, but they're not trying to hurt us. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, and I think we have to decipher between the enemy and Jesus, how that even works. Yeah. Because when we, f- when we feel embarrassed, yes. we can feel attacked, yeah. but it's just that we're embarrassed because we messed up and that means we have to admit we were wrong. And so then it can feel like they're the enemy and they're attacking us. The enemy can help spin that so many different ways when really it could just be, hey, you said you were going to do this and you're not. And like, what's going on? And because that's not like you or whatever. And we have to decipher that voice. Or take, just cherry pick whatever sin you want to out of the Bible. Yeah. Whether it's some form of sexual immorality, drunkenness deceitfulness, greed, whatever it is. If someone, the church or someone in the church, especially people who are in relationship with you, are calling out something they see in your life, trying to hold you accountable, that is not, accountability is not the same as attack. Yeah. We, can't, we have to hold them differently. Yeah. And again, the way it's done might be done in an attacking way, right? but accountability is not the same as attack. And we need to help people see that. Yeah. We also need to help people see that disagreement is not the same as being against. Mm, Yeah. There's a, Andy Stanley said this in, in his book, not in it to win it. Disagreement and difference are inevitable. Division is a choice. Mm. And so just because someone disagrees with me does not mean they are being divisive. Right. We tend to view it that way because we want everybody to agree with me. Mm-hmm. But when somebody disagrees with me, it doesn't mean they're against me. It just means they disagree. Right. So just because the church doesn't do things the way you want them done doesn't mean the church is against you. Right. Doesn't mean they're not listening to you. It doesn't mean that you haven't been heard. Like being heard does not mean getting what you want. Right. Being heard is an attitude on the listener. Mm -hmm. It's an action. I, I hear you. I understand where you're coming from. However, this is what we're going to do. Right. I think sometimes people equate uh, disagreement with, well, I'm not being heard. 
And so then, well, that church didn't hear me because I'm not getting my way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think if you're a parent and you have a kid that comes to you with something and they want it done this way, but you don't, you know, that's not safe for them, then you aren't agreeing with them. It doesn't mean you're against them. Right. I mean, it can just, it can be in so many different situations, but I think, and that's where the being humble piece comes into yes. play because yeah, if you're entering everything and and with humility, yeah. then we won't want to try to be on that high horse yep. to be like, no, this is the way we're doing it. Cause that, it might not be the wise way, or maybe you've missed out on tens of thousands yeah. of conversations yes. that you have not been a part yeah. of with behind the scenes. And yeah. so, yes, we hear you, yeah. but it doesn't always mean that what you're saying yeah. is going to change the things. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's humbling, yeah. Yeah. but we also have to enter in that humility piece. Yep. And that is hard because yep. we do, we want our opinion to matter yes. and we want to be heard and we want to change things depending on what it is. And maybe we've done our own research. And so we're not coming in blindly, yeah. but it, that humble piece I think is the yeah. key. If both parties come in with humility and follow that with honesty, I mean, the end result I think would be much better. Right. So I, I do, I do think the, you know, when we're being helpful with somebody, it's, it's not just helping them get past the hurt, but sometimes helping them understand the difference between things. That accountability is not always the same as attack. And disagreement does not always mean they're against you. And just helping them maybe see a fuller picture. And right. again, we should only do that with people that we have deep relationship with. Right. Not just some random person that tells me they're church hurt. And so then we can start getting in that defensive. We got to keep away from defense, but try to help them maybe see the full picture. Well, and, and if someone's coming to you because they have been hurt, you can also, as a listener, ask them, yeah. do you want me to help yes. you solve this? No, that's good. That's or good. do you just want me to listen yeah. to you? That's really good. Because then you can decipher as you're listening, okay, what are the yeah. steps that could be taken? Cause sometimes people just want to vent to vent yeah. because that they're, uh, external processors. Yep. Not everybody wants you to fix their problem. So I think we have to be good at asking That's that really good. as well. Yep. That'd probably help us in our marriages. Huh? Mm -hmm. Probably for most of us men. You like to fix everything. Yep. And sometimes I don't want you to fix me. I just want you to listen. Yeah, maybe I'll start. <laughs> But I have the solution. Uh, oh, I, I'm sure you do have <laughs> this is, the solution. This goes back to our parenting podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to give my solution every time. Mm -hmm. Keep your mouth shut. Yep. can go in many different directions. Mm. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> so we want to be um, humble. We want to be honest. We want to help the other person be honest, too. We want to be helpful. Like, and that's, I love what you said. Are, do you want me to just listen or you want me to, to provide some help here? Mm -hmm. And again, the help can go a lot of different ways. Yeah. We want to help them, you know, tell the person who offended them. We want to help them find, you know, the authority that could do something about it. We want to help them get to a counselor if they need it. But also we want to help them maybe see the full picture. There's a whole bunch right. of stuff we could talk about in the helpful piece. But if we're going to talk with those who have been hurt by the church, we do want to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Whatever they need, how can we help? Well, yeah, because we don't want this church yep. hurt to run them Correct. away from Jesus. We want it yep. to run towards Jesus because yep. Jesus won't hurt us like that. Yep. But unfortunately, we are imperfect, yep. broken people. And yep. so we do make mistakes. So what's the last principle in talking with someone who's been hurt by the church? To be hopeful. We want to be hopeful. When it's applicable, you might share your own story about being hurt by the church and how Jesus helped you navigate that. Or a story of someone that you know of, hey, this person experienced something similar. I want to let you know their story. Or would you be willing to talk with this person who's gone through a similar thing that, yeah. that you have? You'd never want to downplay or diminish what the other person is experiencing or has experienced or is feeling. But when it's helpful, share your own story. Like, me too is a powerful phrase. Mm -hmm. Like when someone shares that they've been hurt and you say, man, me too. Mm -hmm. And you're able to share from experience how 
God helped you through that. Maybe some steps you took, advice that was given to you. That is very hopeful for someone. It can yeah. be. Yeah. You might share with them the path of forgiveness. Mm. Like forgiveness is huge in this thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. And even helping somebody understand that forgiveness is not forgetting what was done. Right. It's letting go of my right to hold it against them. Right. My right for revenge. Right. Well, and I think the enemy uses our unforgiveness Mm -hmm. and will strike Mm -hmm. whenever he can. And so my thinking is I don't want any unforgiveness sitting in me because I don't want any ammunition for the enemy. So even if you have to forgive that person 70 times seven, then you do it over and over and over and over so that you don't become bitter and keep doing it until it's fully gone. Yep. And hurt people tend to hurt people. Right. And so if you're holding on to that hurt, it's going to come out somewhere. Right. Hurt will come out. It might come out in our own hurting of someone else. It might come out in self-harm. It might come out in depression. It might come out in anxiety. Like we, if we don't deal with that Mm -hmm. in a very real Jesus centered way, including forgiveness. And this is what people I think so often forget that when we are unwilling to forgive, it doesn't keep the other person in a prison cell. Mm -hmm. It keeps us in a prison cell. Right. We actually set ourselves free when we forgive. And I think it's not just forgiving the person that hurt us. We have to forgive ourselves. Did we play a part in yeah. it? Did we do, did we say something that set them off? I mean, there could be a million yep. different ways, but like also be good about forgiving yourself and for all things. Yeah. Like I, I think we're, it can almost be easier to forgive somebody else than it can be to forgive ourselves, but don't let the enemy use shame yeah. and guilt and beat you up. Like forgive yourself too. Like that yep. there's freedom in that as yep. well. So sharing the path of forgiveness as a way of hope is a very, very big thing. This next thing doesn't sound hopeful maybe on the surface, but again, the humble reminder that part of the hope of the gospel is we are all broken people. Yeah. Now, that doesn't, it doesn't sound hopeful because that means hurt is going to continue. Right. But, you know, the reminder of broken people tend to break things. Mm -hmm. So we won't always get it right. But there is also so much good in the midst of our brokenness. Right. Like the good things that the church does, the good people in the church like, I think that's, it's just a reminder that we all need to remember. And it does provide hope that I'm a broken person saved by the grace of Jesus alone. Mm-hmm. And I will not be fully whole until he returns one day or until I die and meet him in, in eternity. And so, again, it's not an excuse to do things, but it does help us understand. Well, there, there should be grace, yeah. right? Like yep. Jesus... Thank goodness Jesus gives us grace and mercy and is patient with us. And we have to do the same with other people. Yep. By all means, we should never put up with abuse or mistreatment of any kind. Like, please don't hear that. But being hurt on some level is a part of the human experience. Mm -hmm. Even a part of being in church. And I think actually, again, I'm not really, I'm not talking about those extreme things. I'm talking about some of the stuff that we let divide the church the, I don't like that decision or whatever. When there's hurt in the church, it gives us as the followers of Jesus, a chance to show the world a different way. Yeah. That we can be hurt by one another and still love one another and forgive one another and be reconciled together. We don't do that very well. We don't have to agree. Yeah. But we can live in unity still. Yep. Yep. We're on the same team. Yep. And th- this could have been said at any point, I think, in our, in our conversation. But I, I thought of this parallel of how people will let sometimes m- what we would call in the grand scheme of hurt, minimal hurt. So not abuse. Yeah. But some of that, somebody w- was judgmental towards me or whatever it was. Let's just call it minimal hurt. This was the the, uh, parallel I had. 
We let that keep us from the church. If I experience a rude worker at one Chick-fil-A, it doesn't stop me from going to every Chick-fil-A in America. Right. <laughs> now. You just might avoid that I one. I might avoid that one. So it, it might change my relationship with that specific Chick-fil-A. Right. Or if I see that that worker is working, I may not go to their register. Yeah. But for some reason with the church, hmm. we let one person who offended me in a church keep me from experiencing any good in any church. Mm -hmm. We don't do that anywhere else in life. Yeah. Except in the church. It seems like we're the most extreme with the church body in and, our in our everything. And Attendance, I think it's, yeah. yeah all and I things. think some of it is because there there should be a high standard for the church to live up to. Sure, yeah. And we tend to also forget the fact that we're broken people. Yeah. So we have that dichotomy we're living in. There is a high standard as a follower of Jesus. He empowers us with the spirit mm -hmm. to live in a way that pleases him. And we are broken. Yeah. And sometimes even with good intentions, we hurt people. But I would just beg people, don't let that keep you. It might keep you from that church. Right. Don't let it keep you from God's church. Right. So any, anything else you want to say on that? Well, and no church is perfect. No. So even if you leave one and go yes. to another, You're going to get they're also there. full of imperfect, yep. broken people and something could happen there as well, sadly. But don't give up on Jesus yes. and who he is. Amen. And the people that are trying to live for yep. him and do their best. Yep. If we, again, we're, we didn't, we're not going to get into it at all on our own church hurt here. But if, if we, we wouldn't be even in ministry if we let every church hurt keep us from the church. There's no way. Yeah. We've, we've been hurt at every church we've ever been in. Including the one we're at. Yeah. But, and I'm not saying that in like a, no, not in a, a finger pointing way because no. I have hurt people right. at every church I've been at, right. including this one. Right. I, I hope it's, I don't believe it's ever been done with, done with intention, intentionally hurting someone. Right. That is a whole other level. But not only have we been hurt at every church, sometimes in ex we have been hurt in really, really extreme ways in, some, and, in, in our and life. And intentional. Yeah. But... We have also hurt people. Mm -hmm. And that's why I would say if, if there's any hurt from myself, I would say I'm sorry. Yeah. And please forgive me. And I, I don't want to do that. Right. I, I want my intentions, my motives, my desires to be pure. And I know that there, are, there is hurt that's been done, hurt that's been perceived th throughout my ministry. That's true. And yeah. anybody who claims they've not hurt someone is in, I think, very dangerous territory of being yeah, extremely you... prideful and arrogant. Yeah. Because we all have... We all have hurt somebody. Yes. And we all need to own that. And we all need to have people in our life who are helping us see those blind spots. Mm -hmm. I didn't even plan on getting on in that. Yeah, but I mean, it is, it is true. Like... Every single person has hurt yeah. somebody else. I mean, I've forgiven people that didn't know yeah. they intentionally yeah. hurt me, but it hurt me. Yeah. And so I worked through it. I gave forgiveness because mm -hmm. they don't know that yeah. they did that. And I know their intention was yeah. not to hurt me, but I know it stung. And so I have to take care of that yeah. sometimes. Yep. Yeah. So those are four principles, I think, that if we just keep those in mind, can help us having conversations with people who have had hurt. Start with humility. Be honest. Be helpful. And most of all, be hopeful. Point people to Jesus with our words and with our actions as best we can. Yeah. Now some prayers. These are just simple things you can add to your prayers when praying for somebody who's experienced church hurt. I think we should pray that they would see Jesus for who he is, not how his people represent him. Yeah. 
Like, Lord, help them see you for who you are, not how your people represent you. That's something else we can pray is that, that the Lord would silence the enemy mm-hmm. in their heart and mind. That don't let the enemy have a foothold in their heart based on the hurt they have received. I think we should pray that they would take the risk of trying church again if it's keeping them from church. Yeah. Like, Lord, give them the courage to walk through those church doors again, to try a small group again, whatever it is. I think um, we should pray that they would experience humble, honest, helpful, and hopeful Christians in their life. Lord, surround them with Christians who exhibit these things, Mm. humility, honesty, helpfulness, hopefulness. And then um, I would say individually that we should pray that we would be a person who is a light for those in the darkness. Like help me be one of those people that exemplifies those characteristics we talked about today. Anything else you would add to that? No, that was really good. So Lord willing, we'll be back next month with another episode. As always, our goal is to release these, a new episode every month on the second Tuesday, unless Sabrina goes away for an entire month. Oh, to see my her Lanta. You're ridiculous. <laughs> if you do have any podcast ideas, <coughs> questions, suggestions, comments, you can email my assistant, Janice, at hello at jeffmanis.com. You can always reach out to us on social media, commenting there. We'll do our best to uh, add those. Our last several podcasts have been have come from listener questions. And so we love those. Gives us an idea of where to head. Sabrina, why don't we end with our marriage mission? We We are are united united in Christ, Christ, unstoppable unstoppable with Christ, Christ, and unbreakable because of Christ. Christ. Now it's time for you to go get naked. And parte. We'll see you on the other side. You've been listening to the Naked Party Time Podcast. Join us next time as we get real and raw about life, leadership, and love. Oh,